Okay, hey everybody, I'm gonna try to rush this video out because I've actually been working on it for like a week and throughout the week, every day, there's been a new twist and turn in the story. And now we're coming up on the last week of the first quarter of 2024. Anyway, so here's the situation. If you don't know, just watch this whole video, but by all accounts, Coyote vs. Acme, a very good movie, is about to be deleted by existence maybe as soon as this Friday, Friday, February 23rd. This is supposedly an awesome movie starring the beloved famous loser Looney Tunes character Wile E. Coyote, and there's a chance you can help. Here's what I think is what you can do about it. I'm going to make two suggestions here. First suggestion, make some noise because noise is good. And the more people that find out about this, the more people are likely to act on it. The more people who are aware of the situation, the bigger the chance is that they can reverse it. So share this video after you see it. And if you still hate me, but you still want to try and fix this, just complain on every forum you use, especially Twitter because Twitter's still big business. Anything that really tracks and trends, that matters. And number two, now this is a little bit more specific, but if you do happen to be in Los Angeles, California this week, I would suggest actually going to Warner Brothers and picketing, causing a mini strike, like throwing up some signs because they seem to really hate that. And once again, the more people who are doing it, the more noise there is. All right, so let's discuss the Coyote vs. Acme situation. Currently, Coyote vs. Acme, a very good movie starring the very famous Wile E. Coyote, is very likely to be deleted this Friday, February 23rd, because that's the end of Warner Brothers' first film quarter of 2024. And supposedly, the movie can be saved if a ridiculous $70 million in ransom money is given to Warner Brothers to relinquish control of the movie. However, there are some big dogs at play here who might be able to save the movie outside of, you know, you and me. And those three people are ironically Mr. Beast, Taylor Swift, and a congressman in the U.S. government. All right, so how did we get here? Now, I'm going to go over this whole situation because I tried to talk about it last week at the Super Bowl and literally no one knew what I was talking about. So let's just go over everything again. And I'm going to try to do this as fast as possible in a condensed recap, but there's a lot going on here. Corporate mergers in the US are nine out of 10 times a bad thing lately. Now in the past 20 years, corporate mergers have been getting more and more predatory and using this strategy that effectively destroys a company to make a few people very rich. Nowadays, when two companies merge, after they merge, a bunch of people in both companies lose their jobs because there's some overlap in those jobs. And the original CEO of the smaller company that gets eaten in the merge also loses their job, but they get a golden parachute and fly away with the corporate war chest, usually putting the company into deep debt in the process. Now, I'm explaining this process because these predator mergers mixed with insider stock trading can put even the safest, healthiest, and most useful companies into the red very, very fast. And they're often done at the detriment to normal people. And you know, little people like you and me who need these companies are suddenly shit out of luck because predator companies have put them out of business. Case example, predator companies raided Toys R Us and Payless Shoes, put them out of business, and now suddenly I live in a town where I can't get shoes or toys unless I go to the effing Walmart that's like 20 minutes away. Now that being said, in the past five years, Warner Brothers has been merger raided twice. First by AT&T, and by all accounts, at first, the AT&T merger seemed okay because AT&T poured some money into the company, but fundamentally, AT&T really didn't know what to do with Warner Brothers, but they at least made an honest attempt at running it. So they got HBO Max off the ground, they got a couple of good things going. Oh, and yeah, they released the Snyder Cut, so that was a win for everybody. But the problem is, AT&T knew they were out of their depths running the thing, so they eventually sold it. And unfortunately, they sold it to Discovery Channel CEO David Zaslav, one of the absolute worst people ever born, and one of the absolute worst people to ever run a movie studio in the history of running a movie studio. By all accounts, Zaslav is a fucking barbarian. He doesn't give a shit about art, he doesn't give a shit about Warner Brothers or HBO, and especially not Cartoon Network, because he has destroyed it. He doesn't give a shit about anything except playing golf and making money, and he's just here destroying hundreds of years of history for his own like amusement. Like remember when Donald Trump became president and put all these like awful people in charge of running the government specifically so they could do a bad job at their job and like ruin that piece of the government? Well, that's what Zaslav is doing for Warner. He's just keeping the lights on. But since the studio went into heavy debt when AT&T sold it to Zaslav, 
By all accounts, Zaslav's long-term strategy is to do even more damage to the company so he can eventually sell it to Paramount, and that will create Paramount Plus Max, which once again will put the company into even further debt, cause even more people to lose their jobs, and David Zaslav will get a massive cash payout bonus if he pulls this off. However, the only thing stopping him right now is that if current Warner Brothers Discovery and current Paramount merge, that will trigger a United States antitrust check. And actually, as it was, he tried to propose this merger a few months ago, and that itself triggered the antitrust check. By all accounts, the merge can't happen because Warner Brothers is still too big a company to be consumed by Paramount. So to make Zaslav get the money he wants, Warner Brothers has to be weakened, it has to be shrunk, and it has to lose its value. So that is why Zaslav is doing all these corrupt things to make Warner Brothers a worse company so it's easier to sell. And I also have to point out that Zaslav personally has the absolute largest week-to-week -week pay of any CEO in Hollywood, despite the fact that Warner Brothers is by all accounts nosediving right now and is doing much worse than the other companies in Hollywood right now. Anyway, on top of Zaslav's just mismanagement of the company, the dude absolutely hates animation in an absolutely disgusting way. On his watch, he's gutted Cartoon Network Studios and even sold the building. He's canceled numerous awesome Cartoon Network shows like Infinity Train. He shelved the sequel to Scoob. And yeah, Scoob wasn't that good, but by all accounts, like, you know, the straight to DVD sequel might have been okay. Well, honestly, no one really cared about it. He also shelved Batgirl and Batgirl was a complicated mess. They had filmed the movie, but by all accounts, no one liked it. So, you know, that was... Uh, an acceptable loss, I guess, because they didn't want to take the money to make it good. And also it was a sequel to The Flash, which no one liked anyway. Anyway, Zaslav's destructive tactics further inspired Netflix and Disney to start deleting their own movies, and that's bad for everybody. Anyway, but back to Coyote vs. Acme. Coyote vs. Acme was different because this was the first time he had tried to delete a movie that by all accounts everyone liked. And because everyone liked it, that was the straw that broke everyone's backs. This was a good movie and didn't deserve it, and it ended up causing a major shitstorm to descend on the studio. People suddenly just couldn't take it anymore, and they knew that if Zaslav could throw out a good movie like this, like he could throw out any movie at any moment's notice just to bake his bottom line. And... Yeah, here's my personal take on the movie. I think if this movie was just released, if Warner Brothers manned up and did the right thing, they would get the $70 million ransom that they're looking for. By all accounts, Space Jam A New Legacy, which was a bad movie, still managed to gross about $90 million in the middle of the pandemic. And everyone is saying that this movie is much better than that. So yeah, by my math, if they just release this movie normally, if it just even manifested with no advertising on Friday, I think with good word of mouth and the relief of everyone involved, I think it would easily get the 70 million thereafter. But for some reason, they don't want to do that. I don't know why they're doing it. It's anti-art, it's anti-everything. And by not backing a great movie like this, there is of course a huge blowback. Now, I can only conclude that the only reason they're doing it is because it's something deeply personal to them, or it's outright corporate sabotage to make Warner Brothers weak and small enough for the Paramount merger to go through. So they still want the $70 million that they would have easily gotten by releasing the movie. And if they don't release the movie and they just get a tax write off, the tax write will be about like $30 million, which is less than half of that. And of course, if they do that, they have to delete the movie, which is fucking dumb. Now, I haven't seen the movie, but everyone on Twitter who has says that it is one of the most brilliant movies ever made. It's a screenplay based on an old New Yorker article about how the coyote should sue Acme. It was made by John Cena and James Gunn right after they had finished making the first season of Peacemaker when they were like on their A game. On top of that, it's set in Albuquerque, making fun of the legal system of Albuquerque, making it very subtle, but very timely and very perfect parody of the just finished Better Call Saul. And on top of everything, everyone who says they've seen this movie has said that it was a beautiful movie that made them cry. I want to see this movie so bad, and I definitely don't want it sent to movie hell. And so when the movie was first announced as being shelved, there was a huge backlash. Like a bunch of people protested, a bunch of people got up in Warner Brothers' face, and so Warner Brothers did something of an auction to see if anyone wanted the film. But apparently this auction was kind of a farce because it wasn't an auction, it was just a take it or leave it offer. Now Paramount and Netflix did make some pretty strong offers. Their offers were around 50 million. Now that was bigger than the tax write-off, but, but it was also smaller than the 70 million that Warner Brothers was looking for. But theoretically at 50 million, they could easily make that back if the movie does release and makes 70 million or better. 
But Warner Brothers turned them down flat because they are just looking for the 70 million that they would have got by releasing it. And they were apparently also concerned that if Paramount did release it, it would be an embarrassment because if it made even more than $70 million, it would show that Zaslav was just completely out of his gourd. Murdering a hit maker like this was apparently a smaller sin than allowing it to make a million dollars for somebody else. Which brings us to the bottom of the barrel last ditch efforts we've arrived at this week, where there are three potential saviors. Now, the first and obvious biggest one is Mr. Beast, unfortunately. Starting with the Mr. Beast story, some children online think it would be a hilarious flex of Mr. Beast's power if the world's richest YouTuber bought the movie out from under Zaslav and used his Chad YouTube money to make a huge power play and just stuck the movie on his YouTube channel, which would be admittedly hilarious. Now, it's not really the best financial move because the YouTube views on it would be like $1 for every 10 views or so. But however, by all accounts, Mr. Beast could do that because according to his publicist, he has about $500 million in liquid assets that he can whip out at any time for his various pranks and stunts. So even though that would be a fifth of his on-hand money, it wouldn't be impossible for him and if he did do it, it would be a massive PR victory here, especially since everyone online really wasn't impressed when he gave blind people eyeballs or when he fed a starving African nation. So that's interesting. Now, I mentioned at first that Taylor Swift was involved. She is and she isn't. Taylor Swift isn't going to buy this movie, but she is an important footnote in this discussion because Taylor Swift has a solution for the what if Mr. Beast bought the movie scenario. So once again, if... Coyote vs. Acme was released in theaters, it would probably make $70 million. Hence why Warner Brothers is sticking to this take it or leave it offer. Now, meanwhile, Disney paid $70 million for the exclusive rights to the Taylor Swift uh, concert movie that came out last fall. And, you know, everyone who's given the shit kind of have seen that movie already. But nonetheless, that does put into perspective how ludicrous WB's just give us a $70 million offer for the film is. But back to the Taylor Swift thing. So the Taylor Swift movie came out in the middle of the Hollywood strike while the studios were paralyzed fighting their own employees over minor residuals. Now, Queen Taylor managed to sell her movie directly to the movie theaters by bypassing the studio systems and cutting a deal directly herself. And then Beyonce did the same thing and also made easily $100 million doing that. Now, what I'm getting at here is Mr. Beast could totally copy that strategy. He could buy the movie outright with his war chest, cut a deal with the movie theaters, and then just release it straight to the theaters. And theoretically, if he did that, he might actually make his $70 million back with some extra. So this would be a really good financial move on Mr. Beast's part if he did it like that. So that is one way the movie could be saved. Mr. Beast could make some money. And yeah, all he has to do is deploy the Taylor Swift strategy. However, there is one final alternative on the table right now, and this is the last ditch Hail Mary effort. The last choice and the last chance we have to get this movie released lies in Texas Representative Joaquin Castro, a congressman from Texas who, as it turns out, is a huge Wiley Coyote fan, being that he's from Texas and Texas has a lot of coyotes. Now, he is pissed about this situation. He knows how fucked up it is. He knows it's anti-consumer. He knows it's extremely not nice. And he knows it's a long-term scam to devalue Warner Brothers and create Paramount Plus Max. Now, he's personally pissed about this. And because he's personally taking it up as a charge, he's in the midst of trying to patch out the filmmaker tax credit write-off law so that these studios can't wantingly destroy all their movies, especially not good movies like this that people want to see. Now, here's one way he could fix this. So as I understand it, back in the olden times, 100 years ago, when this law was originally enacted, there had to be a film tax write-off inspector. And the basis was to get the film tax write-off, the film inspector had to be summoned down to the studio, see the original masters for the film, and see it literally lit on fire. Now, since films aren't made on film anymore, even though they're still called films, and because tax write-offs are especially being used way more critically on a much larger number of films, this process was eventually phased out. But if Castro gets this way, maybe he can fix it so that there could be like a judge who just watches the movie before it gets deleted, and maybe that judge could decide whether or not it's worth giving them $30 million to destroy this film forever. Like, that would be literally the bare minimum they could do. There's also a proposal on Twitter that they could also say that since they're taking $30 million from taxpayers, that would buy the movie 
for taxpayers. So what they're proposing is that if things are given away like this for a tax write-off, that those things would then become public domain. And then all of a sudden, Coyote versus Acme can be sold on a bootleg DVD for $1 at Walmart. Anyway, this whole thing makes me angry, and that's where we're at. Now, if the situation keeps unfolding in a week, either maybe there will be a last minute miracle deal, or maybe the situation will get worse and the film will be fully deleted this Friday night. That being said, like I said, this situation keeps playing out day by day. And in a funny twist, last night was the Animation Annie Awards. And Eric Bauza, the current voice of like several Looney Tunes characters, including Daffy Duck, went on the podium to demand the film be released. And yeah, of course he's demanding it to be released. He plays half the characters in this movie. If this movie is released, he'll get a huge SAG payout. Nonetheless, he wants it released, I want it released, so we're on the same side. So yeah, you fight your fight, Eric Bauza. They're denying you a fat paycheck. Anyway, yeah, that's what happened latest uh, on this development. And hopefully, as the week plays out, there might be even more developments. Now, like I said, the best thing I think you guys can do is once again, make noise on Twitter, make noise on any social media you use. If you can get to LA, protest Warner Brothers Studio directly. And yeah, last but not least, maybe keep asking Mr. Beast if he wants to make a huge public relations win by buying this movie and then releasing it directly to theaters. All right, that's about everything on how this is going out, but uh, I really, really want to see Wile E. Coyote. Uh, I, when I was a kid, I had a friend who really loved Wile E. Coyote, and uh, I know this would make him happy, so that's, that's the least I can say about this. All right, um, good luck, Wile E. Coyote. Good night.